Hi, and welcome to another video for our home lab setup with Hyper-V on a laptop. In the last video, we actually looked how more so to connect to our server or our Hyper-V server remotely through some different tools that are available on Windows. Uh, the first one uh, that we looked at was the Hyper-V manager. So here we can actually see I'm actually already connected to my Hyper-V server here. Uh, so this is very going to be very useful especially if you have a server configured with only the core option and not the GUI option. So of course we do always have the, uh, the GUI interface through remote desktop, but if you do not have uh, the full desktop experience installed and you only have core installed, uh, this Hyper-V manager is going to come in very, very handy, especially for this video. And then the other thing that we also looked at on the last video was the Windows Admin Center. And we can actually see right here, we're looking at that server and we're actually looking at the virtual switches right now. And we can also look at the virtual machines for this server as well, which currently we don't have any. That's what we're going to be creating today. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, please be sure to check that out because we are going to be using the Hyper-V manager today. Uh, then we can also check some things out with the Windows Admin Center. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started here. So one of the first things that we're going to be doing is creating our VM. We're going to be connecting it to our switch. We're going to be setting up the hard drive for it. And we're also going to be connecting our ISO to it and then going through the install of the operating system by hand. And then in future videos, we're actually going to be going ahead and looking to see how we can actually execute code directly on our VMs uh, without logging into them. So again, similar to PowerShell remoting as well. And we're also going to be eventually taking a look at desired state configuration to configure our servers and maintain that configuration throughout time uh, to make sure that there's no drift that happens. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's first get started by creating our session variable here. So we're going to go ahead and start some PowerShell remoting right away. So we're going to create that session variable to our new PS session. We're going to put in our computer name of JP hype V. 2022 and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a credential here for administrator and let's just go ahead and let's run that right away let me just put in my password here and we are good all right so now what we're going to do is we are going to do a enter ps session and we're going to put the session parameter we're just going to put our session variable here we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter in that right away. This way we can get our commandlets that we need. Perfect. So the first thing that we're going to actually want to do is set up our paths that we want for our VMs and our VM or our virtual hard drive as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's just create a variable called VMs. And we are going to go ahead and we're going to set that to C colon backslash vm backslash vm vms with an s there and we are going to actually go ahead and create a vhes variable and we are going to set that to c colon backslash vm backslash vhds all right and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and write down a new item path and we're going to do VMs here. The item type is going to be a directory. And we are going to force that. And we're going to do the exact same thing for our path for VHDS. And we're going to put the item type again as directory force. All right. So once we actually create this here, this is actually going to be just for our basic setup for the VMs here. So once we actually run that, if we went ahead and we looked at our server here, if we just remote desktop into it, we can actually see our folders are now created. So let's go ahead and let's start creating these VMs. Now, a good example of where you would probably use this, instead of going, of course, into Hyper-V Manager, you can create a new virtual machine that way, is maybe you have a file um, where you have all your configurations for the VMs that you want to do, and you want to create like 10 or 15 of them, uh, this is definitely going to come in very, very handy. So 
let's first off just create a variable here. We're going to call it VM name, and this is going to be the name of our virtual machine. We're just going to call it HV2022. We're also going to need to put in the switch name. And now this is going to be in reference to our switch that we've already created. Uh, so that's actually going to be external. Now, in theory, what we could do is if we do a get VM switch here, we would be able to get them. And because we only have one, it would be very, very easy to do it that way. So what we could actually do is do get VM uh, and then where object name is equal to external. And if we go ahead and we pick that out here, we actually get the switch back here. So we can just change that from switch name to switch. And then all we need to do is get a VHD path. Now this is going to be the path to our virtual hard drive. So we're going to make that equal to VHDS. And we are going to make that a backslash HV2022.VHDX. Just to actually make it a little bit nicer, let's just do VM name here and then we are going to specify our iso path now this is going to be the path to the iso you want to install on your vm now this will actually have to be found on your server unless you have a network path to it um, but mine is in c um, isos and then win server 2022 so i'm going to go ahead and put c backslash ISOs win server 2022 ISO and that is perfect now what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to start creating our VM so let's create another variable called VM and we're going to make that equal to new VM and the name we are going to put in as VM name the path we are going to put VMs because that is the path to our VMs our memory startup bytes, I like to put this at two gig. Uh, you'll find some people will put that at one gig. Um, I would definitely recommend at least two gigs. Um, you can even go four and that would be really, really good as well. Um, but I would definitely recommend no less than two. And then we're going to do a new VHD here. And we are going to do a path for that. We are going to put in our VHD path and our size in bytes. I'm going to just put this as 50 gigs. Uh, you can definitely make this a lot bigger if you have the hard drive space available. And then just make sure you add this dynamic tag in this way. It won't take the 50 gigs right away. It'll just kind of allocate that as being available for the hard drive to take. And then what we're going to want to do now that we have our virtual hard drive and our VM created, we need to add our virtual hard drive to the VM. So we're going to do a add VM hard disk drive. Uh, there it is. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to specify our VM. And this is where we're going to put our VM variable. And then our path is going to be the VHD path we're going to specify that exact path to the hard drive we want and then what we're also going to want to do is we're going to want to connect the dvd drive which is going to have our iso and also we are going to want to connect our network adapter or our vm to our external switch uh, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and let's do a set vm dvd drive and the vm name here we're going to put in vm name you do have to, only have to be a bit careful with the hyper V commandlets because some of them will specify VM, some of them will specify VM name. So just make sure that you're putting in the proper variable in there. Uh, and then the controller number, we're going to put that as one. And the path, we are going to go ahead and put in our ISO path. And then we are going to do a connect dash VM network adapter. 
And this is going to ask for the VM name. So we're going to put the VM name here. And it's also going to ask for the switch name. So we have our variable switch, um, but we know that it has a property of names. So we're going to put switch name here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a start VM. And VM is going to be our VM variable. And let's go ahead and let's run this bunch of commands here. Now this will actually not take that long to do. It's usually pretty fast. It's already done. So if we actually go ahead and open up our Hyper-V manager, there is that machine. It is already running. We can already see it in our Hyper-V manager. If we go into our Windows Admin Center, we just refresh this in virtual machines. We will see it pop up here as well. This might take a little bit of time and there it is. So we can actually click on this here. We can actually see all the information for it. We can see the VHDs. We will be able to see the network. Um, so if we actually go and click on network here, we can see that it is actually connected to our external switch, which is perfect. We can see when it was created. Uh, what the uptime is, and we can see the memory that's assigned to it and the virtual processors that are assigned it to it as well. So that is all looking very, very good. Now, there is an option to connect here. You're going to see this option. Now, you actually will not be able to connect to this VM right now uh, because there is actually no OS on it. Uh, we actually need to do that through the Hyper-V manager. So once we have our Hyper-V manager up here, all we're going to need to do is just double click on the VM that you want to go into. If you have more than one, we only have one in our case. So we're just going to double click on that one. And a window is going to pop up. And this is actually going to be our new virtual machine. With, it's already booted to our Windows 2022 installer that we put into the DVD, the virtual DVD drive. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's just click on next here. We're going to actually go through that whole install um, just to make sure that you guys have your VM fully functioning here for that next video. You guys can actually play around until that next video, maybe create some other virtual machines, play around with, uh, play around with the different type of parameters that there is out there. So we're just going to, uh, once again, do a standard evaluation desktop experience here. And we're going to click on next. We're going to agree to the terms and license. We're going to do a custom install once again. And we are going to have our 50 gig hard drive here. We're just going to click on new, click on apply here. And we're going to click on OK. And there it is. It created our partition here. So let's just go ahead and click on next. And this is going to go through the install, basically the exact same install that we did on our laptop or our desktop, depending on what you used to install your server 2022 in the first couple videos. So we're going to go ahead and just pause this here and I'm going to come back once it is all complete. All right. Once the install is fully complete, it might take uh, like five to 10 minutes or so, probably maybe a little bit less. Um, I think mine was just under five minutes. Um, oh, it's going to ask you for an administrator password. So once again, you're just going to put in your administrator password in here that you want and make sure that you can remember this because we will be needing it in the future and click on finish down there. And we are actually fully configured and we are good to go. So if we actually just minimize that view here and we are going to go ahead and I like this little action here to do the control alt delete that will simulate the control alt delete keyboard entry here we're just going to put in our administrator password we are just going to log in and make sure that everything is looking good here So again, this is completely running on our Windows 11 um, client here through the Hyper-V manager that is connected to our Hyper-V server. Uh, let's go ahead and let's click on yes here. Okay. 
and we can actually already see that we do have internet access if we go ahead and we open the network options here we can change adapter options we can see our ethernet cable is connected to our hyper v network adapter we go on property oh not properties sorry just double click on it and then click on details here we will actually see our ip address right now for me is 172.30.123.13 we are actually going to be fully configuring this server on another video i just didn't want to get too too far ahead on this video making sure that you guys can actually create the vms through powershell so we have fully seen how to configure our or create our VM at least at this point uh, through PowerShell so we don't actually have to do anything on the GUI other than going through the OS install. Uh, so that should all be good now. And in the next video, we're really going to get into configuring the VM. We can actually fully configure the networking um, as well through PowerShell remoting, kind of like what we did for our server. You can do it very easily for uh, the virtual machines as well. We're going to be going over that and then we're going to be going over desired state configuration, uh, which is going to be very, very neat. Uh, we'll be able to make sure that services are installed, uh, make sure that certain files are in our system and just make sure that all those things are there, are in place. And then it will actually constantly monitor to make sure that those things are in place. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys have any comments or questions on this video or anything else, please let me know in the comment section. I will do my best to answer you guys directly. If it's something that can benefit a lot of people, I will make a video on it as well. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.